everybody. So over the past, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, I have been getting my panel ready to solder. And so I always say check, check, double check, and check again. So here's all of my notes. I've double checked everything. Um, my window size, build two size here. Um, oops, I'm going backwards here. Build two without zinc. This is the size I need to finish to, et cetera, et cetera. I always work on a layout board. So I've got a piece of um, three quarter inch plywood here. Um, I have the tracks embedded down. I've transferred my, my thing off of my workbench, which was laying over here in all the other videos. I've pulled it over and transferred it up onto my layout board. These tra track channels are great because I still have an edge of my paper running underneath here, so I've got it clamped down, and this just unscrews and lifts off, but it helps, helps me keep it um, nice and straight and square. I can move it because sometimes I have more than one project going, so literally, I, this is not part of the workbench. It's, it's all separate here. I can move it and, and work on something else or whatever. Um, so I always have two, two things here, um, two edges, so it's always got a good square corner. And then I just use another board on top, depending on the length of what I'm working on a project. I've got different lengths of these with countersunk holes in it, and I just use a screw. I think this is one and a quarter inch wood screw. And before I screw it down, I measure... Um, my width, my length again, I square it up. The only thing I've got to caution you about is when you're using a metal square, be careful that you don't drop it on your glass. You don't want to break your glass. So as you're manipulating it around, um, over here I couldn't find another piece of layout board because they're all being used. And so I just put my zinc down as a border, a stiff border. And then I use horseshoe nails to hold it into place since I didn't have anywhere, any way to screw it down. So I've measured it all. I have um, check, check, double check, and check again. The width, the height, I measured diagonally from corner to corner. And also this way from corner up to corner. And it measures exact square. In my window, it's a vinyl window that this is going into, and so I know that it's exact square, and I've also checked it for exact square. So this is all squared up. Um, just for those that are a little nervous about it, I also have over here where it originally was laying my cut zinc, and I've checked it. So if I measured the outside edges, that's my window size. If I measure the inside edges plus a quarter of an inch because remember your glass recesses in an eighth of an inch on each side so if you add a quarter of an inch if you measure from the inside plus a quarter of an inch it measures out to what my calculations are over on my paper okay so um, it's it's all ready to go my pieces here you can see fit tight um, you don't want this this is bad. Actually, if you scroll down on my page, um, Stained Glass Tips and Tricks in the group on Facebook, you will find that gaps are good. I've got a video, and here on YouTube, I've got a video called Gaps Are Good. And so, you'll notice that over here, let me see, all of my glass actually needs to spread out almost a quarter of an inch. So this is where my edge needs to be. So I'm going to push these over tight against that and also up against that and then getting over to the side again I want to make sure everything is up tight to my borders oh my goodness look at that gap you know what again watch my video called gaps are good because if you just I'll give you a short scenario here if I start soldering on this right now my solder literally is just going to sit on the surface of this. And then when I flip it over, it'll be on the surface again. I don't want that. I want, when we used our pattern shears, let me get some of this glass moved over here. Let me see if I can back up enough on this. There we go. 
you want pieces to be able to move because what we want to do is we want to put a sixteenth of an inch in between every single piece and so for the next few minutes I'm literally going to take a little bit of time and get these all separated so that they all have about a sixteenth of an inch in between every piece here before I start tack soldering this. That's going to allow the solder to kind of drip down in between these pieces and it's going to make it a lot more sturdy because it's penetrating in between each piece not just sitting on top. So literally I need to go through and I need to get all of these spaces Looks like I need a piece of foil trim there. Nope, just, just the way it was reflecting. Um, I need to space all these out and get a quarter of an inch between each one. Then we're going to start soldering. And the first step of soldering, besides getting these all centered every, and separated here, is I'm going to go back and I'm going to tack solder these all into place so that they don't shift on me again. So once I get them centered, I'll, I'll tack anywhere that there's a piece that comes together. I'll go through and I will spot tack everything. So all the pieces will be put in, in place and held, held in place there. Then I'll go back and I'll flat solder everything and, and do my first steps as far as that goes. So I'm going to take the next few minutes and just kind of get these all organized, centered, make sure everything's all level and even, and then touching the borders because the borders is what's determining my finish size. So I'll see you in just a few minutes again or scroll on through to getting ready to solder. Thanks so much. See you in a while.